Hey, this is Tim Sheehan from Gulf of Maine Biological Supply. Uh, it's a nice windy fall day here, and I just got back from collecting some freshwater sponge. Now, a lot of people don't get uh, many chances to see sponges unless they're out in the ocean, maybe uh, scuba diving, and probably very few people even know that uh, in our lakes and streams and, and some slow-moving rivers, there's actually species of sponges. Um, believe it or not, this little critter, it looks like a plant, but it's actually an animal. It's a colonial animal, that is, it lives uh, uh, as a group, as an aggregate, or a bunch of different animals all close together, sort of like corals. And uh, my son, Finn, and I were just out uh, in our boat on the freshwater lake, and uh, we were able to find uh, some really nice colonies, uh, mainly attached to underwater uh, trees that have fallen um, into the water and started to decay, and these uh, little, uh, uh, animals colonize the various branches. Now, um, there's about 20 different species of uh, sponge, uh, this particular sponge, which the genus is Spongilla, and uh, they'll either grow sort of branched and uh, fruiting like this one, or often they'll grow like a carpet across a rock, but typically we find the ones that are attached to tree limbs that are sunken in the water, and so they're more of a, a fruiting state. And I just have these in a pail, a uh, five gallon pail of water. So um, uh, what's interesting about sponges is they form their uh, body of uh, silica, like a glass type substance. But the reason they're green colored is there's actual algae, a type of uh, uh, chlorella that lives within the spicules. And so it's a bit of a symbiotic relationship. Now these guys are filter feeders. They're gonna be pumping water through their body and out through these larger holes get sort of a close-up there. You can see where the water would be coming out of the sponge. Um, and in the winter time, they go dormant um, because, let's face it, in the winter it's cold. Uh, water temperatures are cold. It's dark because of the ice. And uh, sponges have an interesting survival technique. They can actually uh, form little, uh, uh, I don't know, like a dormant little bud, and it's called a gemule. But uh, in terms of reproducing, they're either going to grow from that dormant gemule in the spring, or they can actually uh, uh, spawn a type of larvae uh, that will uh, drift through the, the water column and attach to a new substrate. But uh, one of the nicest things uh, we know about freshwater sponges is they're an indicator of good, clean water. And here in eastern Maine, um, we have some very clean freshwater lakes and ponds and and rivers, but you look at some of these, the bottom part, notice, uh, which was out of the light, is less green colored, and the top part that would have been up in the water column is a bright uh, uh, chlorophyll kind of a green, so there's a beauty there, and you can see the stick. So anyway, a um, uh, little primer on freshwater sponges. Once again, this is Spongilla, there's about 20 different species in the U.S., so hope you learned a little bit, and uh, tune in next time. If you like what we're doing here, subscribe to our channel, Tidepool Tim. Have a great afternoon.